Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's a pleasure to have you join our Sunday worship service today. The elders of BICF warmly welcome each one of you. If you have any questions or suggestions for BICF, please contact us through our email address or our Instagram. May the presence of the Lord be with us as we praise and worship Him together. The sermon today is the continuation of the sermon series on Peter, as we and people in many countries around the world are still facing unprecedented challenges with the pandemic. Our speaker today is Rev. Dr. Stefanas Budiono of Calvary Baptist Theological Seminary. Let us begin our service with a call to worship. Stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 5 Let us praise God in thanksgiving and let's sing together, There's a Redeemer, led by Holy. Let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. Dear God, as we worship you this morning, we are in awe of your greatness and holiness, but we look at ourselves and realize how we have fallen short. We have wronged you and we have wronged our neighbors. We ask for your forgiveness and we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we will walk in your ways and live the life as you intended. As we examine our hearts and come before the Lord in repentance, Elisa will lead us to sing together, Lead Me to the Cross.
Let us pray together. Father, we confess our sins and we confess the truth of your word. You said that if we confess our sins, you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We come before you with a humble heart, asking for your forgiveness. We repent of our sin, cleanse us, Lord, and we will be clean. Restore, in, restore to us the joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit in us. We need you, Jesus, and we love you. Thank you for loving us first. Amen. Let's hold to God's word of grace as we read the significance of confession taken from the first book of John, chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let's continue our service by singing together, Yet not I, but through Christ in me. This song is telling about how God works through Christ in us and how he will bring us to his glory. Erina and Jerry will lead us to sing together, Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Jesus, my Redeemer, there is no more for heaven not to give. He is my 
joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. Through this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine. Can see all is fine, yet not I, but to Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side. The Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hope my Shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley He will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my part, and He was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for He has said, that He will bring me home. And day by day, I know He will renew. Until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Till my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, till my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me.
Dear BICF family, Let us give thanks for God's goodness and provision to us by providing the offering through BICF. You can transfer your offering to BICF bank account. Pray that we as a church can continue to minister and bless others. As the coronavirus pandemic rages around the world, we are brought to our knees to pray, acknowledging that we need God and that God is in control. Before we have the family prayer led by Jerry, let us prepare our hearts by singing together. The lecturers will lead us in singing the song, Hear Our Prayer. Brothers and sisters, let us bow down our head in prayer. Our Father in heaven, who lift your name on high, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has redeemed us, and for your Holy Spirit, who dwells and guides us. We come to you as a family of our dear BICF. Thank you for teaching us not to be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, 
with thanksgiving that we may present our request to you, O Lord our God. Father, we want to continue praying for the COVID-19 situation. Although we are now in the new normal, we still see a lot of new cases of COVID-19, especially in business districts. Many of our brothers and sisters have been affected by the virus, whether physically, mentally, or financially. Businesses have been closing down, and many people have lost their job. Lord, we want to pray for wisdom for our leaders and all of us, so that we may go through this difficult time with Thou as our vision. We continue to ask for your protection as we continue to preserve year whilst holding on to Christ, our living hope. Father, we also want to lift up all local churches around the world during this time of hardship. We pray for all pastors, elders, deacons, and all of your congregation. We pray for all ministries around the world. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, especially those in northern India who are facing persecution. Would you bless us, Lord, with your wisdom and protection so that we may continue to be salt in this world full of nihilism, resentment, and hopelessness. May we become your light that shines through the darkness so that we could share you, our Messiah, the word which became flesh, who gave us eternal hope. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care some of the prayer items from our dearest BICF family. We pray for Cherisha, who has just gone through a surgery. We praise you, Lord, for the successful surgery and ask for your continued healing as she recovers from it in the next few weeks. We pray for Pasi Hombing, Ferris' father, as he continues to undergo therapy for his paralyzed feet. We trust, Lord, that if you are willing, he can get up and walk. But if we fully trust, but we fully trust, Lord, in your good plans, no matter what our circumstances will be, as we know we have you, Lord, and you have us, and you are all that we need. We lift up all of our BICF brothers and sisters in whatever situation they are facing, in joy or sorrow, in celebration or in hardship. Teach us to rejoice in you always, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit fill us so that we could all produce fruits of the Spirit in whatever circumstances you've allowed us to face. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, so that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Today's sermon is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 28, Experiencing Jesus the Messiah. Reverend Dr. Stephanas Budiono will deliver the sermon. So let us prepare our hearts to receive his words by singing wonderful words of life which will be led by Aimi and Magda. Sing them over again to me Wonderful words of life Let me more of their beauty see Wonderful words of life Words of life and beauty Teach me faith and beauty Beautiful words, wonderful words Wonderful words of life Beautiful words, wonderful words Wonderful words of life Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner lives to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. 
Jesus, only Savior, sanctify us forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are going to read your Bible, your Holy Word, and we are going to perplex on the experience of Peter, your apostle in Matthew 16. Please help us to understand your word and please help us to apply it in our daily context. Thank you Father. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ it's nice to speak to you again even virtually through this videos uh, through this sermon video but truly from the bottom of my heart I love to see you personally I love to mingle to chat with you personally when um, I remember when I first time I went to BICF 
and see you all there. But this pandemic really, really forbidden us to do that. But in everything, I believe that uh, you are in great joy because uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in you, His Holy Spirit has strengthened you and keep you safe. When you read in the Bible, Matthew 16 verses 13 to 28, I will read for you, but I encourage you to open your own Bible and read there directly by yourself. It says like this one, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, listen, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then after that, after that, the Matthew, the, the writer, specifically, specifically will um, um, specifically mention about the first story, the first experience uh, for Peter with the Jesus the Messiah. So this is the first experience. I know exactly that uh, most of you already under uh, already heard already heard about this story but I want you to listen together read together and um, going deeper what he meant to with this story okay this is the first experience first 15 but you he asked them he asked not only Peter but he asked the 12 he asked them his disciples who do you say that I am? Okay. When you read before, in for verse thirteen, uh, for uh, yeah, in verse thirteen, he say about who do, do who do people say that the Son of Man is? But this is personally, Jesus said about uh, not saying about the um, the Son of Man again, but he say. Who do you say that I am? He pointed out himself. At that time, 16, um, uh, at first 16, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus responded, Simon, son of Jonah, you are blessed because flesh and blood, it means that human being, did not reveal this to you so this is not about um, the the natural reason anymore but this is the revelation from god so i continue i uh, repeat again because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but my father in heaven and i also say to you that you are peter and on this rock I will build my church and the forces of Hades will not overpower it. It will I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth is already loosed in heaven. 70, uh, 20 and he gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. So in this first story, I want to remind you, I want to um, give you an explanation that you have to understand that uh, this was not the first time Peter realized who Jesus was. Because you may read that um, chapter 14 verse 33 that every every um, um, he told to his disciples about the messiah messianic messianic so this is not the first time peter realized who jesus was the disciples had been convinced that jesus was the messiah at least 
since the events recorded in Matthew took Matthew 10 took place but until this point re, listen to this but until that point this point the disciples had thought of the Messiah until this point 16 chapter 16 the disciples had thought that of the Messiah as a powerful and victorious king who would deliver them from Roman oppression that's the context um, when uh, uh, Jesus asked to the disciples about who really him is his identity his true identity who really was uh, is him at the time so this was Jesus time not other time not Peter time to redefine his identity as the Messiah so as the Messiah Jesus would not free his people this is really uh, he is um, he would not free his people from Roman oppressions rather he would follow his destiny of building his church and going through death to resurrections so until now we already know and are known and understood that uh, the first story about the the experience the first experience between peter and jesus as the messiah is um, the definition, especially the definition of Messiah is not what Peter thought but at the time he pronounced it Jesus is the Messiah but listen to the next story Okay, I will continue the story so we will have um, um, two steps in Christian's faith about uh, this experience Okay, I will continue from verse 21 from then on, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and, listen this, suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and listen this carefully, be killed and be raised the third day. Oh, this is hard. This is really hard because it's this message challenge the core Peter had the core Peter had at the time in his heart challenge the the definitions about the Messiah he had Peter had in that time so listen for the uh, continue I continue then Peter took him aside oh, Peter cannot cannot take it anymore um, then Peter took him aside and began wow began to rebuke him oh no Lord this will never happen to you he said that remember the first story the first experience 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 he he with the revelation of God with the revelations of uh, from heaven from the Father in heaven, he mentioned, he mentioned fully with, uh, what is it, excitedly, he was so proud with that, he, he said that Jesus is the Messiah. But if, he, you know, in Jews culture, if you said he is the Messiah, the, the, the promised Messiah, he is the um, uh, Jesus is the promised king the the anointed one so how could you as uh, the lower I said I said in um, and culturally as the lower followers you rebuke your the anointed anointed one but this is truly experience this is uh, the, the the experience um really uh, the, that that definitions the lord gave the lord i mean that jesus gave to peter uh, according to what messiah is uh, really beat 
his car. So um, I think, not I think, but I'm sure that Peter Peter will not would not enjoy with that reality. That's why he forget that he just said that Jesus is the Messiah. He forget about it and he rebuke him. He said, again I said, uh, again I read it, Oh no Lord, this will never happen to you. But Jesus written, Jesus turned and told Peter, Listen, this is really hard rebuke, more than Peter rebuke him. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me because you are not thinking about God's concerns, but man's concern. This is really hard. This is the second story about this. And Jesus said, continue. He said not only to Peter, but he said to his disciple. Then Jesus said to his disciple, if anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will find it. What will it benefit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his, loses his life? Or what will a man give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angel in the glory of his Father. Listen this, this is really help for us as we are going to experience what uh, experience like a Peter experience with Jesus as the Messiah. We are going to experience this every day. Okay, listen. For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father and then he will reward it according to what he has done. According to to what the man, my disciples, uh, my believers, my church has done. I assure you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His, in his kingdom. Brother and sister in Christ, um, I want to emphasize this understanding about Christ's identity as the Messiah had been the disciple first step. This is only the first step. Understanding the identity that Jesus as the Messiah. We all believe and we all believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus um, bridegroom, bride, um, the groom, heavenly groom. Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the Lord, the Lord of all lords. We know his identity. We admit it. But this is just the first step. I want to remind you this. But the second step is really hard. The second step is the idea of the Messiah's destiny to suffer. The idea of the Messiah's destiny to suffer on the cross and be raised from the dead would be much more difficult for them to grasp. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the second step not only hard for them but it's only hard for us now even we understand and we know exactly the identity of Jesus Christ as the Messiah Jesus Christ is the the promise anointed one the promised Messiah the anointed one nobody else Jesus has the power to do this to do that has the power to to um, apply his miracle in this world to raise, raise the death to 
um, make the blind see make everything from the bad become become better from the bad become best we know exactly what he done but to experience him not only according to his identity but to experience his cross his rules his his what i have to say his um, dominion over us over our life his best think of his church is sometimes it's hard if regarding the cross we will experience so when so i i remember i remember uh, what we read about when the, um, he mentioned about this to peter to this disciple so this like uh, the opposite directions it means it means like uh, peter should choose where where his position uh, peter have to peter thought that he has to choose one one side no to experience christ in your life in peter's life especially also at the time we we as a christians we have to admit and exp with uh, great joy we have to experience this both sides his identity and his cross his identity as a messiah his king of king and also his suffering because that's the the mean of it i want to go first a little bit deeper when you say uh, when you read this one uh, first verse 18 i want you to listen this and i also this is the first experience of, with peter and also i also say to you that you are peter this is really good expressions that you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the forces of hades will not overpower it that's really mind-blowing i said what would the messianic messianic community be like like um, what, what in his mind what in christ's mind bicf will be the community that jesus revealed would be different from anything his disciples had ever imagined at the time so never they can understand it at a time so he used this is really mind-blowing for me he used peter petros in greek means a movable rock or stone so the rock can move move movable can go anywhere something else and can be moved to um, can be moved by anyone anybody but he used peter and use rock the word rock in greek it means uh, using petra so peter petra did you see the difference peter a movable rock but on this petra an immovable rock formation immovable rock formation jesus will build his church so this is not about Peter or whatever he, he mentioned about. This is about Jesus and he is the, the true foundation of it. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to jump into the, the debate in the um, uh, scholars about this, but I want to make sure that you will uh, you understand that um, when jesus said he will build his church so the true foundations will not move away is only him okay 
but uh, I want not go to the first experience, not stop there. I want you to listen to the second experience about him too. This, okay, this his prediction about suffering, die and raise from the dead. That plan was not immediately acceptable to the disciples. The the this the um the the essence the essence of dangerous trap was the placing of human interest and plans over God's plans for world redemptions. That's why Peter said, "Heaven forbid, Lord! No, 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 no! Cannot do that." Peter, along with the other disciples, was looking for glory in new kingdom and had no desire to participate in suffering and self-denial. But Jesus said it. The opposite option to following the natural human inclinations of the disciples' natural inclinations. So the self-denial demanded of those who would follow Jesus when against the disciples' natural inclinations. We have, in the second experience with Peter, Peter learned to, to, mass, uh, to put aside his selfish ambitions in order to keep his life. You may read it in 16 verse 24 and 25. For to deny self would be to follow Jesus pattern. Yeah, to the way uh, that's it, the the way to life, rather than Satan's the way to death. The way to life, the way to death. We are going to follow Jesus examples. And we have to as a Peter experience, we have to experience both of them. Okay? The, this desire for power and material wealth was at the heart. This is the reality. At the heart of his desire for self-preservation. Peter desired for self-preservation. But Jesus revealed that the final evaluations by God would bring all deeds and motivation to light. So this is um, really what i want you to understand and know about the the experience of peter the the experience with jesus the experiencing jesus the messiah so the, again i want to remind you in this um daily in your daily life because this is really hard for us um, in these circumstances this is not about um, this pandemic. It's actually reveal, expose our own desire, our own desire as as uh, believers. Expose also other desires. So where where is your position at this and at, at this time? In this time, in this time of the uh, I mean, in this difficult time, where is your position? You want experiencing the, you want to experience only the glorious state of Jesus Christ. Of you want, as he mentioned to Peter and other disciples, he wants you as disciple, his disciple, his believer, his church, his immovable um, church, because you as the church is built on the immovable rock. You only want his glorious, or today you want to be more like Christ, like he mentioned to Peter and other disciples, to go to the lost, to go to others, to share, to share about Jesus Christ is the only shepherd, so you will experience even at the time at that at this time you will experience suffering it's okay if you experience some um, cross that's good 
so you have time to do the best things for your Lord you have the opportunity the best opportunity to share your Lord until he comes again so and uh, I want to emphasize at the um, the second experience there is two you have to remember at the second experience it's about the glory and the judgment the glory and the evolution day that will help us to pursue not only the glory but we we have to evaluate ourselves so we will do whatever Christ want us to do suffer like him and um, take up our cross self denial or we want to to be happy to be a glorious uh, glory life to experience the best things only according to ourselves so that's really hard for us i know but people of god church I think we have to admit and really totally surrender to what the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, wants us to be. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father in heaven. We learned from your word two steps of faith. we want to apply this in our lives we want to experience your identity as the messiah we want to admit it but along the way we have to take our cross according to your second experience we want to self to be deny ourselves for your sake to glorify you to testify you please help us in this difficult moment please help us to apply this whatever it must take whatever the cause is please help us to glorify you in everything we do thank you father we believe that you will bless us in our life journey so your message will spread out your gospel of Christ will spread out through us until the end of this age thank you father we pray in Jesus name amen God bless you May the sermon touch your hearts and draw you closer to our loving Father God and to His Son, Jesus Christ. May we continue to grow in Christ and let His words be the foundation of our spiritual growth. As we are near to the end of our service today, Amy will lead us in singing Befriended.
Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us in our online fellowship. We hope that the Lord fills you with a grateful heart and let's continue praising Him. To close